Hey everybody, Ed Holman, Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel. I hope everyone's doing well today. Well, look what I've got here. I've got a kind of little crazy collection of DAC streamers, streamer DACs, whatever you want to call them. And I thought I'd just kind of do an evaluation of each one, starting at 80 bucks and finishing up at $1,500. So I just thought it would be interesting and kind of share my thoughts about, you know, what I think about how they function and sound quality and things like that. And so we'll start with the Wii Mini, which I think is just a fantastic little device for $80. It's a great gateway drug into hi-fi and streaming. It functions well. The Weem software is quite good. Obviously, it's updated frequently. You, know, you got digital EQ and all kinds of stuff, but don't use this by itself. Go get yourself a nice, affordable, you know, hundred-ish dollar outboard DAC, and you got a really nice sounding combination. I like this DAC with it, but I can't tell you about this DAC yet because it's the review is coming out and it's not yet been released to the public. So, great little DAC for eighty bucks. So that combination works really well. The Weem Pro adds. On top of the Weem, as far as functionality uh, and performance, it's a better DAC, but I would still recommend using an outboard DAC. This one does work very well, but if you're spending 150 bucks on this and you're getting some improvements, not only in the streaming engine, it is a better streaming engine, you might as well plug it into something, if you're gonna use an out external DAC, might as well plug it into something better. And in that case, you know, if you're gonna, you know, something around 250, 300 dollars SMSL topping, uh, the Shelly Labs, uh, uh, Fio, Fio, you know, there's some good DACs out there. I like the, the Gashelli Labs J2 AK4493. That would be a great combination with this. And then we move up to, and again, 150, 80, 150, $500 for the Cambridge Audio MXN10. Now this is just a streamer. It has a digital output on coax or optical and an analog output. It is not a DAC, so you can't plug a digital signal into it and have it decoded. It is just strictly a standalone streamer. Now, the bigger brother of the CXN100 is a full-fledged DAC streamer and everything. So that's the Cambridge Audio at 500 bucks. At $850, and full disclosure, plus 300 bucks for the linear power supply, the Eversolo DMPA6 is kind of the combination of all the things that we're talking about. It is a streamer with a DAC. It can output its digital signal to an external DAC if you want to, but the party piece here is it has digital inputs and can act as an outboard DAC for some other device. And in my testing, I sent the digital signal from this into here and use this as the DAC. So this that makes this very compelling. And also, it happens to be amazingly well-built and beautiful. Um, then there's the Orchard Audio. Uh, Pecan Pie Plus Premier. Now, it is a remarkable digital analog converter. It's an okay streamer. The, the uh, Pecan Pie module that Leo, the owner of Orchard Audio, has designed and engineered for this does very good and sounds really good. And of course, the internal communication is all I squared S, so we don't have any jitter issues or anything like that. It can take a digital input on SPDIF coax, and so you could use it just as a DAC. It also has a really excellent uh, balanced or single-ended headphone amplifier built into it. And for me, that then makes sense to have a touchscreen because you're going to be sitting next to this. If your headphones, you're never more than six feet away. Touchscreen on this doesn't make any sense to me because if I'm sitting 12 feet away in my chair, I'm not going to get up and go touch it. I'm going to interact with it on a tablet like I do all of these. So this touchscreen makes sense. I don't know about this one. So from the standpoint of just a DAC, the Orchard Audio is by far and away miles ahead of all of those as far as DAC goes. It is, it rivals, and I'm still struggling with it, but it may be better than my modified shit by Frost. I don't know. It is on that level as far as performance goes. Uh, and of course, remember the Bifrost is what, $800, $900 isn't, doesn't even have streaming in it uh, or a headphone jack. So the, or the Orchard Audio is by far and away the best sounding unit as a DAC. So what I did was, to figure out which had the best streamer, is I plugged each of these into the Orchard Audio via the Spitif Coax, the Eversolo and the Cambridge, and I listened to them through a common DAC. That way I eliminated any, variety, any uh, differences in DAC topologies between the units. And the Weem sounded very nice, but it showed up a lot of the limitations of the streaming engine that Weem uses. And it's good for its money. I, from a value standpoint, you can't beat Weem. Hands down, best value in the bunch, no question. For 150 bucks, this thing is amazing, provided you use an outboard DAC. 
As far as quality of the streamer goes, I can't measure the, the uh, Volumio streamer that's built into the Orchard Audio because it doesn't have a digital output, so I couldn't compare it in a common DAC against the other one. So I'll leave this one stand as, without question, this is the best sounding DAC with a really good streamer. We'll leave it at that. But when it comes to just a streamer and the quality of the streamer, hands down, without question, the Cambridge Audio is a better streamer the engine inside is far better than the Ever Solo. No question. And as I said, the CXN100 is even better still from what I understand. And it is a DAC as well. The party piece with this is the fact that it's got so many goes into and goes out is, and it's balanced. This isn't, this is just single ended, but that's fine. My application for this single ended is fine. But for this, without question, as a complete device, the Ever Solo is the most compelling, without question. It is, the build quality is fabulous, the display is fabulous. The software is immensely powerful and probably has too many choices for me. I get confused. It's like going into one of those restaurants that has you know 60, 60 pages on the menu, everything from Rubens to steak and all that. And it's so hard to make up a decision because everything looks good. Um, I always go for the pancakes. Anyway, that's the, the software in this. So I found the software a bit difficult and I did a review on this and you may see it before or after because I shoot out a sequence where I talk about the software and uh, goes in and goes out is on this in more depth. But as a streamer, the Cambridge is better. Now, I have viewers that have gone from Weem products, the Weem Pro, Weem Pro Plus, feeding it to an outboard DAC, taking the MXN10, feeding it to that same outboard DAC and saying that there was no comparison, that this was so much better. And that I had one of, one of my uh, viewers and friends told me that he was heard stuff on recordings he'd been listening to for 50 years that he didn't know was there when he listened to it through the Cambridge. But as I said, as a complete device, the Ever Solo gets the nod. However, I can't find any love for it. I'm not a fan of the way it sounds as a DAC. Um, it is an ESS Sabre. It uses twin 9038 Q2M DAC chips, I think. I'm pretty sure of that. Uh, and so it's a dual mono, fully balanced design. But like every ESS Sabre chip I have ever heard, including the one in this, it has that Sabre glare and I just can't get past it. It's strident in the upper mid range and high frequencies. And I don't think, you know, I've had people say, oh no, it's extra detail. I don't think it is. I think it's just more energy. And I actually think because it is so energetic up there, it actually masks detail. Um, and this with the two chips, it's got that digital glare in spades. This has it, no question, but that's not the way I use it. So it's fine. And it's an older chip, so it's not quite as bad. But for whatever reason, this just, I can't find any love for it. I couldn't warm up to it. Um, I, it but it's magnificently well built. I think it's a great value. It's worth every penny. As a one box solution in this group, it's by far and away the better choice. Um, but I don't care about features and I don't necessarily care about fancy displays. Um, I care about sound quality and from a sound quality standpoint, pure and simple, without question, the Orchard Audio is the best sounding device here. And as a, as a complete package, it's expensive. It is Volumia, which is fine. Um, but the DAC is just so good in it. It just sounds amazing. Um, I would almost buy it and consider just using it as a DAC. Uh, although the streamer does work quite well and does have a good sound quality. And I would place this streamer in this above the sound quality above the streamer in this. And then this, of course, being the best one. And these being very good, no question about it. But they're not in the same category. And I don't think anybody has that expectation. Well, that should generate some comments. I hope it does. And I look forward to your comments. Please tell me where I'm wrong. <laughs> Please tell me where I'm right. Please tell me you still love me. Anyway, I'm just going to wrap it up now. It was a lot of fun doing all this. It was a lot of fun comparing these. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you got something from it. If you did, I would very much appreciate your subscription. The more subscribers I have, the easier it is for me to get product for manufacturers so I can do more videos and hopefully put my foot in my mouth many more times to come. Please like the video if you can. Um, also comment. I know I'm going to get some comments. I look forward to them. Honestly, I look forward to them. I want to hear your feedback. I really enjoy that kind of back and forth that we have and that communication that we have uh, in the comment section. Please comment. Let me know what you think. In the video description, Amazon affiliate links, you know the drill with that. 
my playlists are in the bottom. You got to send me a playlist, please. Spotify, Tidal, Cobuzz, Amazon. I don't care. I want to hear what you're listening to. I want all of us to be able to hear what you're listening to. And for my international viewers, please, I would love to get a playlist. I would love to know what you're listening to because obviously it's we all are kind of cloistered in our markets. And, you know, if I was to turn on Spotify or uh, Tidal here in the U.S., it's going to push out whatever latest Taylor Swift, although not Taylor Swift, but whatever latest uh, artist is paying to have their uh, uh, material pushed forward, their media pushed forward. And I don't really care about that. So I wind up listening to a lot of the same things I've been listening to for a long time, or a lot of the same artists anyway. And I would love to get exposed to some new stuff. And that to me is the best part of all of this. So please send a playlist. I would be grateful. Um, and I can't think of anything else to say. So Thank you so very much. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your comments. I appreciate the fact that you tune in to watch me and do man, all my silliness. Thank you so very, very much. This is Ed Homewood, Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel, saying it's now time for you to go listen to some music and send me your playlist. Thank you so much. Have a great day.